What is up everyone? It is an extremely dangerous thing to have fellow Apple geeks that you talk to. Um, the thing is about eBay is it's really easy to stay away from it. You simply don't type in the URL, you don't click on the bookmark, and then you can't be tempted by anything. But when somebody contacts you and offers you a very, very good deal on a really nice bit of Apple kit, it is extremely difficult to say no. So today we are unboxing yet another parcel from Dave. Um, I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel once again in the video description, just in case any of you guys who maybe watching this video, haven't seen my previous videos. This is a wonderful product, something that I've never checked out on the channel, and it's going to be a massive, massive treat. So let's dig into this outer packaging, and we'll go from there. Okay, folks, today, oh my word, every single time the packaging is just absolutely extraordinary. Um, everything is mint. It's like receiving a brand new Mac shipped from Apple. So you guys can probably tell, unless you have this window minimized, this is indeed a Mac Mini and a relatively new Mac Mini at that. So here we have a Mac Mini and as you guys can tell, it's a pretty damn new one, at least by the standards of the usual machines that I unbox on this channel. This is a 2011 Mac Mini. Um, it's a lovely high-end model. It's a Core i7 model. I can't remember the exact specs, but we're obviously going to boot it up and take a look at the specs. Um, this particular Mac Mini has got Thunderbolt, which makes it feel very new. It says Core i5 on the box, but I expect this was a BTO option. And again, usual fantastic packaging from Dave right down to the plastic wrap on the box. I'll keep all of this packaging in really good condition hopefully and also keep the shipping carton just in case you never know but when he offered me this deal I just couldn't say no. I don't really have a particular use in mind apart from making videos um, but I'm sure something will crop up. Now the rarity well the rarity of the scenario um, in terms of this unboxing, is this could actually be my main machine. Um, it's so powerful and modern that it could easily be my main machine. The only thing that really makes this model feel old in comparison to the current Mac Minis, and well, I mean, they're a little old, um, they really do an update, but the thing that makes this one feel a little old is the fact that it doesn't have USB 3. This was pre-USB 3 integration into Macs, but as I said, it has Thunderbolt. So if you wanted to use this as a main machine, you could e easily go out and get a dock or something like that. So here's the Mac Mini itself, all wrapped up. We'll unwrap it in a second. We'll just have a quick sneak peek into the box. Um, this time around, I am going to take the power cable out. We also have another bonus cable in here. We have got what looks to be a, I didn't recognize it because it was so Apple-y for a second. This is a HDMI to DVI adapter, a proper Apple one, so that's nice. Here we have the Apple Care booklet. Of course, it's out of warranty, um, but still nice to have it included. And it looks like we've got all of the documentation in here, never really touched, never really opened, as well as the Apple stickers. There we go, check it out. We will put that straight back where it came from. I'll leave the adapter out because that will definitely come in handy. That can go into my drawer of all. What we'll do is we'll unwrap the Mac Mini itself. This feels just like getting a brand new Mac. It's crazy. So pop that down there. Pop this in here and then we can put the box to one side and take a look at the machine itself. There we go. And I'll slot that into the shipping carton a little bit later on. So let's take a look at the Mac Mini itself. I did unbox one of these um, last year, I believe, in 2016 for work. We bought a brand new 2014 Mac Mini for a very specific task in work. It was the 
extremely underpowered low-end model, the 1.4 gigahertz, um, 4 gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive model, which is absolutely awful. Fine for what we wanted to use it for in work, um, it doesn't actually get any direct use, it just runs um, a keynote presentation. But uh, this, this is, even though it's a much older model, it's a much nicer model. So this was, I believe, the first Mac Mini that ditched the optical drive. They switched to this design from the uh, previous design. Let me just go and grab one, actually. So this is a rather yellowed and tired looking Mac Mini G4 um, that really needs some attention. But this was, of course, the original Mac Mini design. And then in 2010, they shifted to this design, but they still had an optical drive slot. Um, this was the first one in 2011 that ditched the optical drive, and you can actually fit two two and a half inch hard drives in here, which is really nice and something that we will be doing in the future. Now, if we flip it round, something that makes this very different to modern current Mac Minis, which has got a little bit of grime and whatnot, that's probably come from my desk, to be honest. Um, Something that makes this different from modern Mac Minis is you can... Let's see how you do this. Which way do you do it? I've got it, folks. I've figured it out. You can flip it around and you can just pull the plate off the bottom and you've got instant access to your RAM right there for RAM upgrades, which is fantastic. You've got pretty much instant access to the drive, which I believe is underneath this panel. But to get to the location for the second drive, you have to quite substantially take the machine apart. Um, so that's definitely going to make a really cool video in the future. Let's take a little spin round to the back and have a look at the ports. One big change that they that they made to the Mac Minis, which I definitely love, is they integrated the power supply. So obviously time moved on, technology got better, and they were able to ditch the power brick. If you look at the old Mac Minis, they've all got this little connection here, and you have an external brick, which is quite you know substantial in size it's pretty much a third of the size of the mac mini itself the really cool things about the really cool thing sorry about these ones is even though they're um, flatter they're a little bit wider footprint they're sort of if you put this one on top you can see they take up a little bit more space in terms of the footprint on the desk but they're shorter and they've built in the power supply so these mac minis take just a figure of eight standard power cable, which we have here, of course, which is definitely very nice. Um, there's a power button there. We've got gigabit ethernet. We have got Firewire 800. So this was before they removed Firewire. Very, very cool. HDMI, Thunderbolt, um, which is obviously great for expansion here. You know, Firewire 800 and Thunderbolt. This is a sweet machine. I'm actually in love with it already. Um, Four USB ports, as I mentioned, USB 2.0. If these were USB 3.0, this could easily, easily be my main machine, definitely. Um, but of course, I've got my Hackintosh, but I'm just sort of saying that as an example. But anyway, as I said, you could probably get a dock with USB 3.0. Anyway, uh, SD card slot, which is a nice addition, but I've always found this very weird about the Macs. I find this weird about the iMacs as well. It's on the back, you know, and if you've got one of these, it's going to be at the back of the desk with all the cables going down the back, you know. I know it would be pretty ugly to have an SD card slot on the front of one of these, but it's just kind of kind of weird to put one on the back. If I was a Mac Mini user and I had it on my setup, I'd definitely have an external one just for convenience because I wouldn't want to reach around the back all the time. Uh, then you've got audio in and out, and I believe one of these, the, uh, the output is digital as well. You can adapt it for, I believe, um, Toslink, so... Um, that's nice, similar to the Apple laptops. Uh, and you've got a little sort of cooling vent here. So very nice design and, of course, upgradable, unlike the previous Mac Mini that we unboxed. Now, funnily enough, I am actually halfway through recording a different Mac Mini-related video. As you guys know, I recently unboxed this guy. This was an extremely generous donation from Kyle. I'm halfway through making a video about integrating that into my server cabinet. Here is my old Mac Mini. We're surrounded by Mac Minis. We've got a G4, the new one. We've got the server and the one that was acting as my server before. This is the little Core 2 Duo, 1.83 gigahertz. As you can see, this has been removed and all of the cables are dangling. I'm about three quarters the way through recording a video about um, configuring a Mac Mini server. And you know, it's sort of a little tutorial. Um, because I get so many questions about it. So the next video that you guys have to look forward to is this one. I thought it would be this one coming out first, 
because um, that was the order I was recording them in, but I'm waiting on a cable, uh, and a very frustrating cable as well. All will be revealed in that video. Um, but I just want you guys to know that this is coming up. I know that I unbox a lot of machines and I don't appear to be doing anything with them. That's true for lots of the machines because I just need time and a lot of them need a lot of attention. Um, you know, stuff we'll do in the future. However, this guy is going to be configured and up and running in the server cabinet very soon. That's the next video that you can look forward to. And then we'll do something else with this guy in the future. And also, we now have this guy to play with. So, anyway, I'm getting distracted. This video is about this one. So what we'll do is we'll move this one out of the way temporarily. We'll hook this one up to the convenient display keyboard and mouse that I have here. And we'll fire it up and see what it's got going, maybe do a little bit of benchmarking and I'll show you guys the specifications. So let's pop the display on. We've got it hooked up um, to the display via mini display, um, to DVI coming out of the Thunderbolt port. We've also got networking in there and the keyboard and mouse power connected. So let's boot it up in three, two, one, go. That's a good sign and straight away bang on the display. So what I'm going to do is pop you guys on the tripod. I'm going to do some pointing the camera at the screen action. And um, in the next video, you guys have actually got a screen capture to look forward to. I've tried to be a little bit more professional because I was sort of doing a tutorial-ish type video. So that's something. But for this particular video, you're going to have to put up with the, uh, the old point the camera at the screen thing. So Get ready, I have warned you. Check that out, what an angle. All right, let's get to it. So this has been um, set back to factory default by Dave. I'd expect nothing less because he is pretty much a pro when it comes to shipping out this stuff. So I'm gonna set this up as m like a personal machine for myself, as opposed to just generically setting it up. I'm trying to get this mouse cable out of the way, see if I can put it around the back of the monitor, there we go, that's better. Um, instead of just setting up a generic um, account or whatever, which I would often do, I may actually use this machine for something, <laughs> which sounds, you know, terrible, but what I mean is I'm, I may use it on a day-to-day -day basis for something. I'm just gonna set it up, but what I'm gonna do is use the same password as my Wi-Fi password for my account password, because I've got a little sneaky suspicion that, um, I may use this down in the living room. Now I'm gonna expand on that in a second. So as it stands, we don't currently have the Apple TV connected in our living room. Um, when we got the Apple TV, and for those of you who don't know, we're sort of long-term borrowing it from my parents uh, because they currently use a Roku, which they get on much better with because Roku is so much better supported in the UK. Um, we, we had the Apple TV hooked up for a bit and we had previously been using Jess's Xbox 360 for Netflix and she's got a chat pad keyboard attached to a controller. So that still, even when the Apple TV was set up, that became the go-to device to watch Netflix because it was easier. And then the Xbox also had 4OD. So we would use the Xbox for 4OD. The Apple TV doesn't have a Channel 4 app at all. So... Um, when it came down to it, the Xbox was just much, much easier than the Apple TV. So we just weren't using it at all um, because it's just not that great in the UK. Um, so then I was going to put my gaming PC on the main setup, but I don't have much space for it down there. I was also going to um, try and put a shelf up and put it down there. But, you know, things just got really complicated and difficult. And... Uh, now I'm considering putting a Mac Mini down there, so that's basically that story. We'll see how it goes, um, but we do need an alternative to the Xbox 360 because it does crash from time to time, and when I say from time to time, you know, pretty much on a sort of, sort of daily basis, I, I would say. Um, let's enable zooming. Okay, so let's have a look at some specs for this machine. We have got Mac OS 10, 10.7.5, so this is Lion. This is a 2.7 gigahertz Intel Core i7. Now, for the 2011 model, uh, they did offer a server edition as well, and that's a quad core i7. I'm not sure at the clock speed, maybe 2.5 gigahertz quad core, but this was the highest end non server edition, as far as I'm aware. This also has 8 gigabytes of 1333 megahertz DDR3, so that was a bump up from the 1066 megahertz machines that we were seeing around the 2009 2010 era. era sorry. 
uh, stumbling over my words. So yeah, a little boost in RAM speed there. Um, let's have a look at a little bit more about this machine. Ah, one really interesting thing about this machine is I believe it was the final Mac Mini to ship with dedicated graphics. I'm just going to check into that. So I've just had a quick look on Mac Tracker, and this is indeed the final Mac Mini that shipped with a dedicated graphics chip. Now it's only a little Radeon HD 6630M, but that's got quite a bit more grunt than the uh, HD Graphics 3000, which is also um, on this system. If we look at the display here, you can see that it's running the video chip at the moment. I'm assuming it doesn't do any graphics switching um, because it's a desktop. My MacBook Pro, I had a 2011, 17-inch um, MacBook Pro, that did switch between the um, Radeon 6000 series chip, whatever that had, uh, had in it, and also the HD Graphics 3000, but I don't think this will switch between them. It'll just constantly be on those graphics, I think, which is, you know, very cool and very convenient. So, little graphics chip. Um, the late, the mid-2012 had the HD Graphics 4000, because obviously we had a bump in CPU generation, um, so, you know, quite a bit more capable than the HD Graphics 3000. Um, but yeah, still the last Mac Mini with a Radeon chip in it, which is cool. Um, moving on, let's have a little look at displays. Storage, we have got a 500 gigabyte hard drive in this machine. I believe it's just a, a simple hard drive, at least it feels like it is. I don't think it's anything fancy like a Fusion drive or whatever. And of course we have the memory, two four gigabyte sticks. This will take up to 16 gigs of RAM with two eight gigabyte sticks, which is nice. Let's delve a little deeper and have a look. So this is the Mac Mini 5.2, um, the mid 2011 model. Uh, as you can see, total number of cores, two. Uh, this was a dual core. Uh, anything else to look at? As you guys can see, it does indeed have Thunderbolt. Normally when I press this on any of the machines I own, it, nothing comes up apart from my MacBook Pro. Um, so that's really cool. Serial ATA, um, it's got the drive on it of course. It's a Toshiba drive, 500 gig. Ah yeah, look, bay name, lower. So yeah, interesting. Um, there will be space for another disc in here, which is super cool. I'm excited to do that and make a video about that. I believe that's pretty much it. Of course, it's still got FireWire, which is great. FireWire 800, it's got gigabit ethernet, of course. It's got Bluetooth, it's got airport, hasn't got any disc burning, it's got no drive in it. So yeah, overall, just a really capable and lovely little machine. Now, what we're gonna do is jump straight into the App Store and we are gonna get out of this awful environment that is Lion. I've uh, suffered long enough with Lion, so let's find an operating system for this guy. Apple have got quite good security features I find when it comes to, uh, whoa, what the heck? Oh, hang on a sec, I just jumped into that accidentally. When it comes to signing up a new Mac to iCloud, I always get verification codes to other devices and stuff. And for instance, in the App Store, it simply asked me to type my password followed by the verification code. So it wasn't even a, a separate dialogue box or anything. So very nicely integrated there. That's downloading, I'm gonna pause the camera. And when that's finished downloading, I will be back with you guys and we'll update the OS. So we are now upgrading the operating system. It's taking a little while, so I'm just editing the video. Um, a few things that I forgot to mention because I'm currently editing. Um, another big reason why I'm drawn towards the 2011 machine is because this is a Sandy Bridge machine. And for those of you who don't know, I just really like Sandy Bridge as a generation. My gaming PC is Sandy Bridge and I think the magical thing about it is it doesn't really apply here with Macs, but what I love about it is since Sandy Bridge, we've only seen very minor performance gains with every new generation of Intel CPUs. Now, if you add all of those performance gains together, yes, the brand new CPUs are much faster than Sandy Bridge, but they were only tiny little increments and Sandy Bridge is so cheap now and it's still so modern feeling. It's still so fast and fluid. I just love it. This actually looks as if it's frozen. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I can't really tell if it's moving Apple with their, you know, rubbish progress bars. Um, but yeah, this is a Sandy Bridge machine. Another cool thing about it is the hard drive interface is SATA Revision 3 or SATA 6 gigabit a second. The previous Mac Mini mid 2010 um, had slower memory at 1066 megahertz, as I mentioned earlier in the video, but also had a slower hard drive um, 
interface. It had a SATA Rev 2, three gigabit a second. So putting an SSD in here, actually you, you can receive the max benefits. And of course you can put two SSDs in here. So this is actually quite a beastly machine. Combining that with the fact that this has Thunderbolt versus the mid 2010 having mini display port, um, it's overall a lovely, lovely upgrade over the mid 2010. Um, I'm comparing it to the previous model because a lot of things changed here. And as I said, the only thing that you didn't get was USB 3 because that was on the next model, the mid or late 2012, late 2012, I think. But yeah, sweet machine. And uh, I'm just gonna wait for this to finish its thing and then we can do some benchmarks and see what it really can do. And maybe we'll fiddle about with some more things. This is going really, really slowly. I don't know why. Uh, it's also pretty boiling. Not sure how hot these get, but I think they do get pretty hot because they expel a lot of their heat through the case, I think. Um, but maybe I should have cleared out some of that dusty fluff that was in the bottom of it before booting it up. I was just too excited. Um, and I thought we could do the cleaning of the inside because it seems to be pretty filthy on the inside. Thought we could do that um, as part of the upgrade video. But yeah, the install is crawling along like a snail. So I don't really know what to say about that. I nearly restarted it because I thought it had crashed because it was on 32 minutes for ages and ages, but it's finally changed now. And I've put my ear up to the machine and the hard drive is making some noise, some sort of read-write noise. It's not sort of as active as I'd expect it to be. So something is slowing this down. I'm not too sure what, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I'll stick with it for a minute. But even though it's got a 5400 RPM drive in it, modern Mac, modern OS, it, it should kind of zip through it a lot quicker than this. Uh, but yeah, we'll just wait and see. I may be being impatient and accustomed to SSDs and stuff, so I'm just gonna be more patient, I think. But man, nice machine. I just wanna get in and start using it, come on. You know what they say, watched paint never dries. And I just went down, just filled my tummy with salad, and uh, I'm feeling prepared, much more fueled and ready to go. And as you can see, the Mac Mini is also feeling the same way. And I did a very productive thing. I dug around in the front room for the Apple remote and I found it. So um, after I record this video and we play around with the Mac Mini, I'm gonna sort of on my own in a very nerdy way in this dark room, play around with the Mac Mini and try and do some configuration um, to set it up as a little home theater machine. I'm gonna at least attempt and see how far we get with that. This is new to me. Um, all your files in the cloud. Store files from your documents and desktop in iCloud Drive, my word. You know, I haven't kept up to date really with what Apple have been doing. Um, pretty much, you know, in the last like three, four years, all the little changes and stuff they've made to iCloud and that, I'm just not in touch with them. And I'm, I'm turning into, I'm rapidly turning into a very old school Mac user now, where I just sort of ignore half of the features uh, of all this modern stuff. Even though I've got a lot of Macs and I've got an iPhone and stuff, you know, I still don't take advantage of half of the, the fancy things that they can do. Um, anyway, let's, uh, oh gosh, yeah, okay, no problem, Siri and all that jazz, okay, so let's, let's just set you guys on the tripod and, and see where we go from there. So it's the following day, and yesterday ended quite interestingly. Um, after the last clip that I recorded for you guys, I began fiddling around with this Mac Mini, um, as if I was going to try and integrate it into the living room setup. I even dug out an Apple remote, replaced the battery in it, and I tried out all sorts of different applications. Um, I tried out Kodi, it's been a while since I've used Kodi, the latest version is very, very good. Um, the interface, as always, is just stunning, and uh, yeah, lovely, lovely bit of kit, but not quite right for what we want. Um, I tried out Plex once again, and I even dug out this Mac Mini, well, not dug it out, it was already out, but I connected it, it's still switched on today, um, to host a Plex server and gave Plex a whirl. That was good fun. Again, another fantastic application, but not really for us. Um, I tried a couple of remote apps, uh, a few of which were better than others. I tried remote apps for this remote, and they were generally really good. There was one um, 
remote buddy, I think it was called, that was very, very versatile. And it allowed you to change all sorts of options for all of the buttons on the remote. That was brilliant. Um, I tried out a couple of iPhone applications for general remotes. I tried out an iPhone application uh, for Netflix that would control the Netflix website in full screen on the Mac. That was fantastic. But none of them, and there is nothing, nothing out there that brings everything together and gives you a wonderful sort of Apple TV-like interface for all of those things. And after a good few hours on it yesterday and a lot of searching online, a couple of people, uh, the people who do tend to... Uh, from what I can see anyway, the people that tend to use the Mac Minis as uh, their home media centre, they tend to be pretty nerdy people like myself, but maybe people that don't quite have to worry about other people trying to get their head around it or control it. Um, and also people that can put up with um, returning to the desktop all the time and launching different applications. Even if you've got a really easy way to launch them, even if you write scripts and set up remote buttons and stuff like that, still, you know, it's very, very clunky in comparison to the Apple TV interface. Uh, so that really got me thinking about my situation and I thought this Mac Mini is a waste down there anyway. It's much too powerful um, for those uses. You know, I've only got a 720p TV and uh, I think an Apple TV 4, fourth generation, would do much better for myself. Uh, I can airplay to it. It's a much better interface. I can use the proper Netflix app. I can search with Siri on the proper Netflix app. Um, it's just, I think it'll be a lot better. So if anyone out there is going to be upgrading to the new 4K Apple TV um, and they want to sell their old Apple TV, I am in the market for one to at least try one. I think it'll be quite a bit better than the second gen, um, even though there are not tons more services available for it. The ease of search and the the fluidity of the trackpad and stuff on the remote. I'm gonna give it a go. If I don't like it, I'll flog it, but I want something that I can airplay to. Uh, I want something to play back my iTunes library. So an Apple TV looks like the most obvious choice. So anyway, let's get back to the point of this video, the Mac Mini. Now I've uninstalled all of those applications um, because I, yeah, I'm pretty much done with it. This is not going to be my media center. But what I have been working on for the last 15 minutes or so is installing some applications for us to test this machine today. So the first thing we're going to do is crank out Geekbench. This is my first time using this version of Geekbench. So what we'll do is we'll run the CPU benchmark first. And of course, 64-bit uh, is what we want. Um, let's run it. And I've also downloaded Mac Tracker so that we can compare um, to some other machines and whatnot. So the results are in, folks, and as you can see, a very, very nice score. 6,394 on the multi-core and 3,347 on the single-core result. Now, let's dive in and compare that to some other machines. I like to do it via Mac Tracker because it's a very nice and easy interface. I just like the way it's laid out. If I need to know something much more in depth about a machine, then everymac.com is obviously a better option because you tend to get more details. But Mac Tracker is a good place to start for getting machine information. So let's first of all take a look at what um, the average score is for this Mac Mini, Mac Mini Mid 2011. And we'll go in and click on the clock speeds here. And the 2.7 gigahertz gets 3,068 in the single core and 5,775 in the multi-core multi -core score. So yeah, this is using Geekbench 4, just like me. Um, so I, I score a little bit higher than average on the multi-core score, which is nice. Let's have a look at a few other Mac Mini models. So how much did we go up in Geekbench for the late 2012? You know, the last great Mac Mini before they crippled the upgradability. Um, let's have a little look. Now, these machines are a lot higher on the multi-core score because 2.3 and 2.6 gigahertz models are indeed quad cores, I believe. Let's just double check on that. Yes, indeed, number of cores, two and four. So you guys can clearly see that this one is 
obviously a dual core and then you get quite a nice boost up on these mid 2012 so man very very nice machines there the quad core machines but this little mid 2011 still a great little performer so let's go back before for the mid 2011 and have a little look at the mid 2010. Now, as you guys can see, mid 2010 classed as vintage, this, this machine won't be, uh, <laughs> won't be supported for very much longer. Well, classed as supported, but uh, yeah, let's have a look. This is obviously core two duo territory. So we're looking at much, much lower scores for the mid 2010 Mac mini completely across the board there with the core two duos, just totally a different world really. Um, let's go out and jump into a different type of machine, Mac Pro. Let's look at the first Mac Pro. And I don't know if these, look at that obsolete, that's crazy, isn't it? I don't know if these will be tested with, yeah, there we go. This Mac Mini trumps, in terms of Geekbench 4 at least, completely trumps an original Mac Pro, especially in the single core result, but even in the multi-core, you know, quite a bit more. Um, Mac Pro 2008, however, was a nice speed boost, but still, let's have a look. Look at that, Mac Pro 2008 obsolete, oh my word. Time is really, really moving on. As you can see, this, this was the standard configuration of the Mac Pro 2008. It was the eight core, uh, 2.8 gigahertz model, of course, You've got um, sort of 2,000 more there on the multi-core score. But if we go down to single core, this Mac Mini trumps it in single core, of course. You know, these Mac Pros are notoriously slow at single core um, tasks. Let's have a look. And obviously, once we get up to early 2009, we've got quite a big boost across the board here in all areas. You know, the single core catches up a little bit and then they just get quicker and quicker. So, yeah, um, this Mac Mini completely poos all over a uh, a Mac Pro uh, an original Mac Pro 1.1 and you know we'll give a we'll give a 2008 a run for its money depending on uh Depending on what sort of application you're running, I'm very pleased with this score. This is a fully capable machine, very nice performance. One thing we will take a look at is how well the hard drive is performing. This machine feels pretty nippy, so let's do a disk speed test on it. It's only a little 5400 RPM drive. So we've got pretty average results for a little 5400 RPM. That could get that could get cranked so much higher just with a simple SSD install because this this Mac mini does indeed have a SATA 6 gigabit a second interface. So you could fully utilize an SSD or two SSDs. So yeah, that's pretty much expected for the disk speed test. So let's touch on graphics. If we go up here, just so I don't forget the model number, we talked about graphics yesterday, but again, this was the last Mac Mini with the dedicated graphics chip. This is of course the HD 6630M from AMD, and it does indeed have its own 256 megabytes of GDDR5 memory. So this chip is quite a bit quicker than the HD 3000 series. So this Mac mini is gonna be more graphically capable than the mid 2011 server edition Mac mini, for instance, that does not include this chip for obvious reasons, you know, server edition. Um, but the late 2012 Mac mini, of course, ditched the dedicated graphics chip, but it's a newer generation of Intel CPU. So it does indeed come with the HD 4000 graphics, which is according to benchmarks. And I did research this earlier so that I was a bit more prepared and not just spouting a load of rubbish, depending on what benchmarks you look at and what results in what games you look at. This graphics chip, the 6630M, seems to be relatively on par with the HD 4000 series. So even though, let's say for instance, you want to shop for a late 2012 Mac Mini because you want the quad-core CPU, but you feel like you want a mid-2011 because you maybe want a dedica dedicated graphics chip, there's really not that much in it. The HD 4000 is pretty much as capable as this graphics chip and maybe a little bit better at some things. But we are still going to give the graphics a little whirl. So I'm gonna boot up a game. So we are gonna boot up Colin McRae Rally, which I think will be okay on this hardware. Uh, let's have a little look. What we're gonna try and do is run it at the native resolution of this monitor. Um, and we'll have the graphic quality on high for now and just see how it goes with those settings. So just as a little warning folks, I've never played this game before in my life. Um, I downloaded it specifically for this video. And one of the reasons I did that was because I don't have access to my library of games at the moment because I don't have a server hooked up to all of my drives. So yeah, this is pretty choppy. 
looks about mm, 16, 17 FPS. Maybe I'm being a little too generous there. Definitely quite choppy, but this is running at the native res of the monitor, so I can't grumble too much. As you can tell, the game also doesn't look too great. Even though graphics quality is on high, it just generally all looks very, very nasty. So what we're going to do is we're going to crank it down a little bit. So this time around, what we'll do is we'll, I'd say, crank the resolution down a little bit. Um, let's crank it down two notches um, and see where we go from there. Or maybe, maybe we'll crank it down to there, 1344 by 840. Don't know if that's the correct aspect for this monitor for 1610. We'll leave the graphics at high and we'll see where we go from here. There we go. So that is quite a bit smoother. Still a little choppy. What what I'm getting as well as the choppiness is just general. The whole thing is just feeling quite... If anything, folks, that's actually worse. There seems to be quite a lag on the input. I don't know why. That's really not good. Okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to move these graphics down to to lower end stuff. So what we're gonna do just to try and get a playable, you know, a nice looking playable game, 1024, 640, low graphics quality. Let's rock with that and see how that goes. Aha, this is much, much better. Okay, cool. It looks and feels better, even though the graphics quality is turned down. The overall display just looks much better. And at this distance, to be honest, I know I've got terrible eyesight, but this monitor is not the greatest monitor in the world either. So, yeah, the whole thing just looks looks much, much better like this. I was thinking yesterday when I began recording this video, I should have taken a trip up to the attic to get my 20-inch cinema display. Because there's something about Mac Minis. I just love Mac Minis hooked up to cinema displays. I just think they look stunning. So... We may do some of that when we do the upgrade video on this Mac Mini and we'll rock two cinema displays with it, I think. Make it look really nice. Yeah, this is fully playable, folks. Of course, it's not fully playable by myself because I I suck at this game. Let's just change the view for a second. As you can see, it's very fluid now, definitely playable. And this isn't, you know, this game is fairly modern, so quite impressed with that, folks. Quite impressed indeed. I'm currently downloading Left 4 Dead. I thought we could try an older shooter. This game by this point is, what, 10 years old? So it'll be interesting to see how it plays on hardware that would have been about, well, when the when this hardware was new, this game would have been about four, three, four years old. All right, guys, so I haven't touched anything. No settings. I've just literally pressed single player and dived right in. Um, one thing I did notice on the menu was the music of all things was lagging, sort of like chopping in and out. I'm not too sure what was causing that. Um, also, the general load and boot of the, the game as a whole is pretty slow, but this loading screen seems snappier than I would expect it to be based on the previous loading. Um, so this is running just out of the box. I assume it's running in, in full res. Um, so yeah, it's chopping a little bit already but oh now that we're into it now that we're into it that's okay yeah that's uh, okay it's actually pretty smooth oh whoa concentrating so much on the graphics and completely forgetting the entire object of the game um, so yeah, this is not really, it's not really playable. It's kind of like jumping between being extremely fluid and not fluid at all. Ah yeah, total massive slowdown there. Just as soon as you... There is quite a big, as you guys can see, it's, oh yeah, chopping its way all over the place. So let's try and crank her down a little bit. Uh, have a look at what our video settings are on. Ah, okay, so it's on pretty low res. 
And you can't really go lower than that res, so can we pull it down any other way? Ah, that's okay. We've got some details on high, so let's crank everything down to low. Okay, so we have cranked right down now. We should, we should get a pretty, where's my sound gone? Oh, there it is. Should get a pretty smooth. Hmm, okay. So after a little bit of tweaking, I'm generally quite happy with this performance. Um, I'm, I must admit, I was expecting a little more from this Mini in terms of gaming. I must admit that. Hello. But, um, yeah, you know, as, yeah, this is smooth, but we are, we are way all the way cranked down now, so you can pretty much use this as your, as your benchmark um, if you, you know, thinking of picking up one of these machines and wondering what it can and can't do. So even out in a big open area, it's still quite smooth. It seems to be getting into the swing of itself. It seems to be like the system is kind of warming up and getting more comfortable, um, which is more than can be said for my gameplay. But this is absolutely playable now, but as I've said, this is, this is way cranked down. But as you can hopefully see, even with quite a horde of zombies running over here, there's still not a crazy amount of slowdown. It's just a tiny, tiny little bit choppy when things get hectic. So I think we're going to leave it there for gaming. I don't really have much more that I could try. So in conclusion, because I think I've rambled on long enough, I know this has been a little bit of an all over the place video and we haven't really showcased what the Mac Mini would be best at and that is all of your sort of day-to-day -day tasks, your day-to-day -day computing tasks and also some heavy lifting in in 1080p video and some Photoshop work and stuff, this Mac Mini would skip through all of that with the i7 processor. Even though it's only a dual core, as you saw from the Geekbench results, I know it's only a, a benchmark, but you know, 6,000 on a multi-core score, you're still pulling a fair bit of weight there for a system of this age. And for the kind of money that you can get these for, it's a, it's a lot of performance for your, for your money. Um, in terms of the Mac Mini in general, it's quite interesting because when this Mac Mini was released, it was such an ideal system, such an entry, you know, a perfect, perfect entry point into the Mac world. Quite significantly cheaper than the iMac and the MacBook, but still very, very capable. And just overall a gorgeous little machine that can, that can just be hidden away anywhere. But time has moved on and the, the newest Mac Minis, the late 2014s, are so watered down with the non-upgradable RAM and stuff like that, and that the the prices going up were just it was just ludicrous to see that three hundred and ninety nine pound Mac Mini, that one point four gigahertz lump, just to see that climb up to four seven nine, such a rip off for the performance, and also. The systems that you can get these days, the small form factor PCs, like that MSI model I checked out on the channel, way cooler than a Mac Mini these days. Way smaller, very capable, low energy. So if they do refresh the Mac Mini, oh man, they're gonna have to do something pretty glorious. But that doesn't stop me from enjoying the older models because when this 2011 came out, it was a complete beast and it still is a complete beast by today's standards. Such a great machine to purchase, even these days used on eBay, still very capable, still fully up to date. Again, the lack of USB 3.0 does sort of kind of make it trail a little bit behind the 2012s. The late 2012s are, are, are beasts, the quad cores, uh, USB 3.0, you know, very nice systems. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade this guy. I don't know when it'll be. I'll have to allocate some funds to get some SSDs for the, for this system because it's not the type of system where I'll want to put SSDs in it to make a video and then take them back out again. If they're going in there, they're gonna stay in there. And I'm pretty confident that a use for this system will will crop up. And I'll tell you one thing, folks, if I ever mangle my Hackintosh, if I ever do an OS update and I just can't get it to work or whatever, and I haven't got time to get it to work, I now, for the first time pretty much ever, have a capable desktop on hand 
to temporarily replace my Hackintosh. I know it wouldn't hook up to all three of the monitors, but I could hook up two monitors out of the box and I could use all of my accessories and peripherals here with the Mac Mini. Um, and it would be just like having my Hackintosh with one less monitor and slightly, ever so slightly slower. Um, so yeah, that's definitely an exciting thought. It's a very handy spare Mac. And we're definitely gonna put two SSDs in it. As for the RAM, it's already rocking eight gigs, which I'd say is pretty much a sweet spot. I've got a Retina MacBook Pro and I have eight gigs in that machine. That's a quad core two, two gigahertz i7 from late 2013. It's a very nice system. I never want more than eight gigs. I never think, oh God, I could do with some more RAM. The only time I think I could do with some more RAM is when I think about my, my future and the future of application and OS updates when more RAM will become necessary because obviously I don't have the option to upgrade it in that MacBook Pro. But as it stands today, I'm never worrying about RAM, never ever. So this mini by far does not need to go up to 16 gigs of RAM. The only way that it would be viable to do so is if whoever was using the mini had a perfectly valid reason for wanting that much RAM in a system of that age. However, if I do find some cheap RAM on eBay, we'll bung it in and knock it up to 16 gigs because that's the sort of thing we do around here. If it's got two SSDs in it and we're opening it up anyway, we may as well throw 16 gigs in there if I can find a kit for a good price, a used kit on eBay. But anyway, all rambling aside, I know this has been a long and kind of drawn out and higgledy-piggledy video, but you'll see this Mac Mini again in the future. It's a very nice system, very pleased with it. Big thank you to Dave. This has given me a lot of thought, food for thought, and it's also helped me determine that I don't think I'll be having a Mac Mini or any kind of computer as my media center anytime soon, because it's just far too complicated to try and configure. And even when you do get it all up and running, trying to teach your significant other to operate all of your complicated things is very difficult. So again, if anybody has an Apple TV fourth gen that they're selling because they're upgrading to the 4K model, I'd be interested in buying it from you. And as for this video, thank you very much for watching. The next video will be another Mac Mini video all about this guy. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.